Hello, welcome back. We have already completed one example set. In today's lecture, we will be looking at the second example set. As I had suggested, please read the problem statement and try to work out the problem on your own and uh, compare the answers after the uh, uh, answers are discussed. Compare your answers with the answers that are discussed in the PowerPoint. The first example, we are going to take the normal distribution. We know that the parameters of the normal distribution are mu and sigma. Mu directly standing for the mean of the distribution and sigma standing for the standard deviation of the distribution. This is a unique case as in many other cases the parameters of the distribution do not directly correspond to mu and sigma. In the log normal distribution you have seen that uh, the parameters were quite different from the mean and variance of the log normal distribution. So, let us take the uh, normal distribution. The probability density function is given by f of x is equal to 1 by root 2 pi sigma squared exponential minus x minus mu whole squared by 2 sigma squared. The two parameters are mu and sigma. The range of this distribution is from minus infinity to plus infinity. The question is mean of the normal distribution is indeed mu. We will go to the definition of the mean for continuous probability density functions, it is minus infinity to plus infinity x f of x dx. We plug in f of x here and then do the integration and see whether the answer on the right hand side matches with the answer on the left hand side. So, that is what we do here, we plug in 1 by root 2 pi sigma squared exponential minus x minus mu whole squared by 2 sigma squared here and uh, this is the expression here. So, how do we go about uh, solving this integral? I hope uh, all of you have exposure to integral calculus, how to do integration and how to handle the limits, how to do integration by parts. What we do here is we make use of the substitution so that uh, the integration gets simplified. We take p is equal to x minus mu by root 2 sigma. So, when you simplify this, it becomes x is equal to mu plus root 2 sigma p. So, I differentiate x with respect to p, I get dx by dp equals root 2 sigma. Elementary calculus the important thing is to identify the correct form of the substitution for uh, x in terms of p, so that the integral will get considerably simplified. We said p is equal to x minus mu by root 2 sigma. So, when you square it, this expression inside the, the argument of the exponential term becomes <coughs> minus p squared. and x was replaced by mu plus root 2 sigma p. So, you are having x replacement for x here and uh, this root 2 pi sigma is there in the original functional form and we substitute dx in terms of root 2 sigma dp. So, this can be integrated. I am just splitting the integral into two parts. So, you have the root 2 sigma cancelling out with this root 2 sigma. I am taking this pi root of pi to the other side, that is why you have root pi into mu minus infinity to plus infinity 
mu into exponential minus p square d p plus minus infinity to plus infinity root 2 sigma p exponential minus p square d p. Please work out these steps on a paper, so that uh, you can make sure that you are uh, doing the manipulations correctly. So, the first term is uh, mu into minus infinity to plus infinity e power minus p square d p. This minus infinity to plus infinity e power minus p square d p is a standard result, you will get root pi. So, you have mu root pi here and that is the same as the left hand side, which means that the second term here, since the first term here became root pi mu, the second term here should become 0. That can be shown rather easily and so you have here root 2 sigma p exponential minus p square d p and uh, this is in a very convenient form already you have e power minus p squared and you have minus half of 2 p here okay, and uh, into minus 1. The reason why I am saying uh, minus half of minus 2 p is when you differentiate this particular term minus p squared you get minus 2 p and so the integration becomes very simple and you will eventually get minus half into root 2 sigma e power minus p squared plus root 2 by 2 sigma e power minus p squared. You apply the upper limit here, you apply the lower limit here and you can see that the term vanishing. Hence, we have proved that the mean of the normal distribution is indeed mu. that is what is given in this slide. The second term on the right hand side vanished and you have root pi mu is equal to root pi mu. Show that the variance of the normal distribution is indeed sigma squared. Again we write down the form f of x which by now you should know almost by heart 1 by root 2 pi sigma e power minus x minus mu whole squared by 2 sigma squared. And uh, again we do the same transformations, p is equal to x minus mu by root 2 sigma, x becomes mu plus root 2 sigma p, dx is equal to root 2 sigma dp, very straightforward. You know the variance is given by integral of x minus mu whole squared into f of x dx. So, when that happens and you substitute for uh, x minus mu, x minus mu whole squared will become p squared into 2 sigma squared and that is what is being written here. You have 2 sigma squared p squared 1 by root 2 pi sigma exponential minus p squared into root 2 sigma dp. Some steps have been omitted here, I would like you to do these steps and see whether you get this particular form of the integral. All right. Now, this integral is in fact very easy to evaluate. I am taking root pi by 2 to the left hand side and uh, this sigma squared will cancel out. So, essentially we have to show that root pi by 2 is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity p squared e power minus p squared dp. You may ask that uh, since the uh, x has been transformed into p, how come the limits have not changed? So, when uh, x goes to plus infinity, p also goes to plus infinity and when x goes to minus infinity, p also goes to minus infinity. So, the limits do not change even after the transformation from x to p. So, you have root pi by 2 integral minus infinity to plus infinity, I am writing p square as p into p, e power minus p square d p. The integration is now possible. We had already discussed how to integrate uh, p e power minus p square 
in the previous example, we get root pi by 2 equals minus p by 2 e power minus p squared at infinity plus p by 2 e power minus p squared at uh, minus infinity and uh, we know that both these terms will vanish on the application of the limit and you are only left with half into minus infinity to plus infinity e power minus p squared dp. This result came after applying the integration by parts method and when you do this, you also by now know that minus infinity to plus infinity e power minus p squared dp is equal to root pi. So, you have root pi by 2 equals root pi by 2 and hence equating the integral x minus mu whole squared f of x dx, where f of x is the normal distribution, we can equate that integral the second moment about the mean to the variance sigma squared and the result is proved because we get the same answer on both sides after the manipulations have been carried out. Now, we are going to look at the use of the normal probability plot. The normal probability plot runs to two pages as far as the normal distribution is concerned. The first page involves negative values of z and that corresponds to the left portion of the standard normal curve. You know that the standard normal curve has mean 0 and variance 1. So, when you have the standard normal curve, you have the negative part and you have the positive part. Since the distribution is symmetrical, you need only one chart, you do not need both the charts. If you have only the negative portion of the chart, you can even use it to find the probabilities for the positive portion of the curve. Anyway, uh, I have provided data corresponding to both the negative as well as positive values of z. We will be referring to those charts to pick up the probabilities for different values of z. Reading the chart is pretty easy. Sometimes you may not get exactly the number you want. However, you can do interpolation between two values if your z value falls between two tabulated values. Sometimes you may also have to do the reverse. You are given the probability and then you are asked to find what is the value of z that is going to give the desired probability. So, this is the inverse problem. We will first do a few examples. What is the probability of z, the standard normal random variable less than or equal to 0? This corresponds to the cumulative distribution function of 0. You do not even need a chart because the mean of the distribution is uh, 0 and the curve is symmetrical. The area under the curve below 0 will be equal to the area under the curve beyond 0 or above 0 and so the probability will be 0.5. To verify this, let us go to the actual probability chart. So, here we are the z value is 0 and we know that the distribution is uh, expressed in such a way, the cumulative distribution function is expressed in such a way that it refers to the area under the curve below the listed z value. So, you go to z corresponding to 0, this is minus 0.09 and uh, so it comes to 0 here and you can see the probability to be 0.5. Now, let us look at the second uh, part. What is the probability of z less than or equal to 0.5? Okay, we have to find the cumulative distribution value of 0.5 and uh, how do we do that? So, the z value is 0.5 and uh, we go to 0 0.50 and uh, this is 0 0.51, 0 0.52 
up to 0.59. For the normal distribution at z equals 0.5, the area under the curve or the probability is 0.6915. So, this is the value here and you can see here that is the answer we have also reported. Similarly, you can show that probability of z less than or equal to minus 0.5 will be 0 0.309 approximately and that happens to be 1 minus 0.691. So, you can use the symmetry property of the normal distribution and uh, find probability of z less than or equal to minus 0.5. The probability of z less than or equal to minus 0.5 would have been the same as the probability of z greater than or equal to 0.5. We just now found the probability of z less than or equal to 0.5 and that came to around 0.691. Hence, what is the probability that z greater than or equal to 0.5 will be? That will be 1 minus 0 0.691 and we get 0 0.309. We have to do the inverse problem now. Suppose it is desired to do the inverse problem to find z corresponding to the given probability. For example, find z such that probability of z less than or equal to small z, this is a random variable and this is the value is equal to 0 0.95. We have to see what is the value attained by the random variable z such that the probability becomes 0 0.95. So, we go to the appropriate uh, table and uh, we search for the probability of 0 0.95 in this table and we see that uh, the probability of 0 0.95 falls between 1.64 and 1.65. You come horizontally along this direction. Here you have 1.6. When you come to 1.64, the probability is 0 0.9495 and uh, when you come to 1.65, the probability is 0 0.9505. So, the appropriate value of z would be somewhere between 1.64 and 1.65. So, we can take it as 1.645. 1.645 would be the close enough answer. That is the answer which is given in this particular slide. What is the value of z such that the probability is 0 0.95? From the table, you find the value of z to be 1.645. So, you should be able to use the table for both direct calculation of the probability and the inverse calculation of z for a given probability. Now, let us go to the next example, example number 5. Here we have the question, what is the probability of the random variable less than or equal to 2 z 1. So, that the probability is 0 0.93. We have to identify z 1 for this situation. First, we will identify what is 2 z 1. So, from the uh, normal probability chart, we can find that uh, if 2 z 1 is 1.476, the probability of z less than or equal to 1.476 is 0 0.93. Please look at the standard probability chart and verify whether this is indeed so. And then you can find out what is the value of z, z1 and that is coming to 0 0.738. Sometimes what may happen is you may think that uh, for whatever reason probability of z less than or equal to 2 z 1 may be taken as 2 into probability of z less than or equal to z 1. Okay. Then you may find the value of z 1, but that value would be 
completely wrong. You cannot take the constant 2 or any constant here outside the uh, outside. If you had taken it like that, if you had equated probability of z less than or equal to 2 z 1 as 2 times probability of z less than or equal to z 1, the z 1 value would have been minus 0.088 and this is completely different from the correct answer of 0.738. In my earlier lecture on normal distributions, I was telling that the distribution of students marks is assumed to be normal or Gaussian and uh, you can make the appropriate calculations for cutoff. For example, mu plus 2 sigma and above may be taken to be S grade and so on. We will take a simple example and see how the cutoffs are fixed in this particular case. So, the problem statement is you are having a large class of 200 students and uh, the distribution of total semester marks is assumed or it appears to be normally distributed. The class average is 45 percent and the standard deviation is 10 percent. The instructors want to decide or identify the cutoff grades according to the following table. So, our aim is to find the cutoffs. So, you have the S grade, A grade, B grade, so on to E grade. The instructors want to put the cutoffs such that 5 percent of the class gets S grade, 15 percent of the class gets A grade, 30 percent of the class gets B grade. You expect uh, the majority of the students in the class to get a grade somewhere uh, in the vicinity of uh, B and C. Okay. So, the majority of the class will uh, have grades B and C. In this case, 30 percent of the students should be having B grade and 25 percent of the students in the class should be having C grade. And uh, the D grade is 15 percent of the class and E grade is 5 percent. Here, you also have the column of cumulative percentages, what I do here is simply add the total percentage of students. Here we have 5, 20, 50, 75, 90, 95 and if you include the students who are getting U grade, then it comes to another 5 percent and that comes to 100. We are not going to look at the U grade, okay. so we will be looking at the other grades. So, the mark distribution is assumed to be normal with mean of 50 and standard deviation of 10. Okay. So, we have to first convert them into the standard form so that the probabilities can be obtained. We have to convert the random variable x into z. The random variable x is having its own mean, mu and the variance sigma squared. So, that normal distribution had a mean of 50 and standard deviation of 10 or variance of 100. If you want to convert it into the standard normal, then it should be converted into a normal distribution of mean 0 and variance 1. For doing that, we take z is equal to x minus mu by sigma mu is 50, sigma is 10. So, we convert x into z by applying the transformation z is equal to x minus 50 by 10. Now, we have to find the cumulative distribution functions for different values of z. Let us look at the cutoff for grade S. So, the grade S is defined such that the probability of the random variable z, the standard normal random variable capital Z is less than or equal to z subscript s 
this is the z value corresponding to the s grade and that is equal to 0.95. We have seen from one of the earlier examples that the z s will correspond to 1.645 and uh, you substitute 1.645 here and that is equal to x minus 50 by 10 and when you do the calculations 16.45 plus 50 is 66.45. So, the S grade cutoff is 66.45. Any student getting value higher than 66.45 or keep it at 66.5 will be awarded the S grade. Now, you want to uh, see what is the uh, probability of z less than or equal to z a, you have to identify z a such that the probability of z less than or equal to z a equals 0 0.8. How did you get 0 0.8? We want to put the cutoffs in such a manner that the percentage of students having the cutoff mark or above should constitute the 20 percent of the class. The A cutoff should be so fixed that 20 percent of the class should have A grade or S grade. Okay. So, where is the cutoff for A? Even though the cutoff for A is 15 percent, we have to add with the percentage of students, we have to add the 15 percent to the percentage of students having the S grade also. What would be a nice idea here is to draw the normal distribution and on the normal distributions right hand side put some numbers as uh, cutoff marks and you can put the S grade and A grade there. Okay. So, you have to add the 5 to 15, so that the area beyond the cutoff for A will be 0.2. So, to find that since the probability chart gives the area below the Z, the area below Z will be 0.8 if the area above Z A is 0.2. So, the cutoff is decided based on the probability below the z a being 0.8 and uh, in such a case we can see that z a is 0.842. I will show this. So, when you come to this particular table, you locate z value of 0.84 but the probability is only 0.788. So, you have to increase the value of z some more and so you see here corresponding to 0.84 the probability is 0 0.7996 and uh, corresponding to probability of uh, 0 0.802 you have a z value of 0 0.85. So, the required z value would be somewhere between 0.84 and uh, 0.85. For all practical purposes, you may take the z value to be 0.84. I have used a software, so I have a more accurate value here and uh, I plug in 0.84 or 0.84 to here x minus mu by sigma and then this becomes uh, 8.42 and so 58.42 would be the cutoff for A. So, the cutoff for A is 58.4. Now, we have an interesting case, the cutoff for grade B should be placed such that 50 percent of the students should have a grade B or above and 50 percent of the students should have the grade lower than B. You can see that 
even though the cutoff for B should be such that it encompasses 30 percent of the class, we have to look at the cumulative distribution and see that 50 percent of the class will have either grade B or higher. But when there are students who are crossing a certain cutoff like 58.4 in the present case, they will automatically get the A grade. And that would constitute about 15 percent of the class and if they cross a certain value uh, corresponding to the cutoff for S, yes, they will automatically get the S yes grade and that will encompass about 5 percent of the class. So, you can do the calculations and you will find that since the cumulative percentage is 50 or the cumulative probability is 0.5 that will definitely correspond to a Z value of 0 and uh, the standard normal random variable taking a value of Z equals 0 means the cutoff for the B grade is 50. Since Zb is equal to 0, we put 0 here and so the cutoff for the B grade is around 50. Similarly, you can find out the cutoffs for the C grade and the D grade and the E grade. The same exercise is followed. The uh, Zc values have been identified using the same procedure as I outlined earlier. Now, you can uh, find out the cutoff for grade C, cutoff for grade D and the cutoff for grade E. You can summarize the results. You can see that uh, the students who are getting 66.5 or above get a S grade and that encompasses about 5 percent of the class. So, in a class of 200 students, 10 students get S grade. So, the number of students who get the A grade is 30 and the cutoff for the A grade is 58.4. So, any student getting grades or marks rather between 58.4 to 66.5 will be awarded an A grade and 30 such students meet this criteria. The cutoff for the grade B as we discussed earlier is 50, for grade C is 43.3 grade D is 37.2, grade E is 33.6 okay? and uh, any student getting marks below 33.6 would be automatically assigned a value of U. He may have to write the supplementary or the uh, repetition of the course. If you count the total number of students, you can see that the number comes to 10 plus 30, 40, 100, 150, 180, 190. So, 10 students have failed the course unfortunately. Let us now go to another problem. So far, we have been discussing about uh, the normal distribution. Now, we have a case where the uh, distribution is described by a funny kind of expression f of x is equal to a power x x can take values 1, 2 and 3. We had discussed this problem earlier uh, in the case of discrete probability distribution. x was taking values 1, 2 and 3. But now, when you discuss the same problem for the continuous distribution case, then x will be ranging from 1 to 3 or x can take any value between 1 to 3. Here, x can take values 1 or 2 or 3 if the probability distribution function is discrete. We are talking about a random variable which is discrete in nature. In that case, x can take values only 1, 2 and 3. If the random variable x capital X is continuous, then the range for x will be from 1 to 3. 
from 1 up to a value of 3. Okay. So, the interval is now 1 comma 3. What is now the permitted value of A and what is the mean and variance of the distribution in the stated interval? To find the value of A, we use the criterion that between the lower limit to the upper limit, the area under the curve should be equal to 1. So, using this criterion, we integrate a power x between the permitted limits 1 and 3 and see for what value of a we will get this integral to be unity. So, we carry out the integration. The integration is quite interesting. You put a power x is equal to p, then take natural log on both sides x ln a is equal to ln p and uh, then you differentiate p with respect to x and you will get 1 by p dp by dx is equal to ln a. Hence, dx becomes dp by p ln a and uh, the integral attains eventually this following form. The lower limit becomes a and the upper limit becomes a cube dp by ln a is equal to 1 and that is nothing but p by ln a. So, you get this expression a cube minus a is equal to ln a. By trial and error, which can be quite easily done with the help of a spreadsheet, you can find that a takes the value of 0 0.7. To find the mean value, we evaluate mu is equal to 1 to 3 x a power x dx and uh, this would uh, require integration by parts. The recall that mu for a continuous probability distribution function is given by mu is equal to lower limit to upper limit integration x f of x dx. Here the lower and upper limits are 1 and 3 respectively. So, we have x a power x dx, we can do integration by parts and uh, integral of uh, a power x dx is equal to a power x by ln a, we get the value of mu to be 1.8838. This integration I am not showing all the steps, I am expecting you to uh, do it on your own and see whether you get the answer. Sometimes you will carry out the integration, sometimes the integration may be quite lengthy and uh, after uh, doing it, you may want to check whether you have done it correctly. There are a few uh, softwares which can uh, do the integration between limits and give you the numerical value. One such software is the uh, MATLAB. Okay. If you have access to MATLAB, you may want to use the integral option to see whether the answer is correct. In the next case, we want to find the variance. Variance by definition is x minus mu whole squared f of x dx. So, f of x is given by a power x. One important thing you have to remember is the value of x is varying between 1 to 3, but you have fixed the value of a to be 0.7. That was the first subdivision of the present exercise. What was the permitted value of a? So, that the criterion for the uh, probability distribution is satisfied. The criterion for the probability distribution was integral of 1 to 3 a power x dx is equal to 1 and after carrying out the integrations, and putting in the limits, you found that a was 0.7. Now, you have to put the value of 0.7 wherever you see a. What I have done is uh, kept a as it is, so that uh, the integration is first done and the substitution is finally done. So, in this case, a actually should be 0.7 here, but I have left it as a. 
because it will help me in my integration. Finally, I will substitute the value of 0.7 into A. So, once you do that, you can again do the integration by parts and find out that sigma squared is 0 0.3253 or sigma is equal to 0.5704. I am taking the square root of this value to get 0 0.57. The next example is uh, involving the log normal distribution. We were discussing the log normal distribution in one of the earlier lectures and uh, we saw that when the random variable x was uh, subject to a transformation okay, and you took the natural logarithm of this random variable x, it became a new random variable. And this new random variable started to behave or obey a normal distribution. Okay. So, this was a very useful result and uh, what we can do is do the transformation for our data and use the properties of the normal curve in the analysis of the data. So, the problem statement is particle sizes of represented by D from a crushing equipment may cover several orders of magnitude and their size distributions are often described by a log normal distribution. For one such distribution, the parameters of the log normal distribution are alpha is equal to minus 1.1515 and beta is equal to 1.919. So, these are the values of the parameters. The log normal distributions parameters are minus 1.1515 and 1.919. So, the question is how can the parameter alpha be negative? Is it uh, making physical sense. When we are converting D to ln D, okay, we are uh, making the transformation from the original variable to the uh, transformed variable. In this particular case, we are taking the natural logarithm and so we have ln D. So, if the value of d is less than 1, ln d can become negative. So, the d value here was 0.3162, the d value here was 0.3162 microns. So, ln d became negative. The next question is quite simple. What is the form of the actual log normal? distribution. Okay. The form of the actual log normal distribution was f of x is equal to 1 by x into 1 by root 2 pi beta squared e power minus ln x minus alpha whole squared by 2 beta squared. The difference from the normal distribution was you have ln x here instead of x and then you also have an additional 1 by x term here. So, whenever you want to find the cumulative distribution using this function, you have to be uh, careful. You have to integrate the function in terms of x and not ln x. Okay. When you want to find the probability of a less than x less than b, it should be integral of a to b f of x dx and uh, so this will be integral of a to b and then this particular function into dx. Okay. When you are using this form directly. The question is what is the normal form of the log normal distribution? Okay. So, you have changed the random variable x to ln x. So, you have to consider ln x as a random variable a new random variable and think always in terms of ln of x. Okay. So, to do that, 
you can put ln x as some variable p and uh, you can write uh, dx by x as d of ln x okay and uh, so dx by x is d of ln x so you are going to have dx by x replaced by d of ln x as shown here and then you are also having ln x here and then 0 to m in fact becomes minus infinity to ln of m. So, you take ln x as the random variable and if you start thinking in terms of ln x this is nothing but a normal distribution with mean alpha and standard deviation beta. I would suggest to you to carry out this uh, derivation or this kind of transformation and integration on your own to convince yourself and become familiar with the use of the log normal distribution. Otherwise, uh, things can become slightly confusing. So, what is the mean and variance of the log normal distribution? They are not directly uh, alpha and beta, you have to use the formula mu of the log normal distribution is e power minus alpha plus beta squared by 2 and in this case it comes to 1.9933 microns. The variance is e power 2 alpha plus beta squared into e power beta squared minus 1 and that comes as 153.95 micron squared and the standard deviation comes to 12.407 micron. So, there is another uh, subdivision or a couple of subdivisions to this example 8 which we will see shortly. Coming to part e of this example, we have really come to the part e. What is the probability of particles having sizes beyond mu of the log normal distribution plus sigma of the log normal distribution? Remember that uh, both the uh, mean and standard deviation have the same units. So, in this case it is uh, microns. What we have to do is to uh, find the probability, we have to convert to z the standard normal form by the transformation ln of d minus alpha by beta. So, this d will be based on what is the expression given here. So, ln of d 1 minus alpha would be ln of mu plus sigma comes to 14.401, you may want to verify that, minus alpha is minus 1.1515 and beta is 1.919 and you get z value of 1.99 and what is the probability z greater than 1.99 is 1 minus probability of z less than 1.99 and we get the answer as 0 0.0233. So, the probability of uh, finding particles beyond uh, mu plus sigma of the log normal distribution is pretty small at 0 0.0233. Part f, what is the probability of particles having sizes below mu log normal minus 0 0.1 sigma log normal and let d 2 be mu log normal minus 0 0.1 into sigma log normal that comes to 0 0.7525 microns and this we have to convert to ln. So, ln of 0 0.7525 is minus 0 0.2844 and then we have to convert this into z ln of d 2 minus alpha by beta which is ln of 0 0.7525 minus of minus 1.1515 divided by 1.919 and that z value comes to 0 0.4519 and the probability of z less than 0 0.4519 is equal to 0 0.6743. So, I have given a few typical examples for the log normal distribution as well as the normal distribution. There are many variants and uh, uh, 
uh, versions of the uh, examples you can do. I would uh, suggest to you to take up any standard statistics and probability textbook and work through some of the problems to see not only whether you are using the probability charts correctly, but whether you are able to understand uh, the problem statement correctly and then do the necessary calculations. Sometimes you may do the uh, calculations correctly, but the answer is not what the problem statement was looking for. So, it is important to understand the question properly and then do the mathematical calculations also correctly. Thank you.